leader of the future! You couldn't lead androids to a picnic. Hating someone never felt this good. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 animated TV characters you love to hate. Girl, are you feeling all right? No, I am not feeling all right! Hey! For this list, we're taking a look at small screen cartoon characters we often find ourselves despising, but that we can't help but enjoy despising. I hate the Incredible Cat! We've excluded Eric Cartman from this list because, although his fellow South Park residents may hate him, the audience cannot get enough of him. Because of Scott Tenerman. I hate him, and I want to make him suffer. Number 10. Scrappy-Doo, the Scooby-Doo franchise. Why would I like to meet up with him? He's my kind of hero! Debuting in 1979, Scrappy-Doo has always been the Cousin Oliver of Mystery Incorporated. No sign of the ghost! I'm going for help to get you two guys out of there! At one point, it was thought that the character's overbearing cuteness would draw in younger audiences and save the Scooby-Doo franchise. Oh, come on, Uncle Scooby! You knew it all along, didn't you? Huh? Didn't you? You knew it! Sure you did! As we all know now, however, Scrappy would ultimately become the franchise's most embarrassing blemish. Wow, I haven't seen... Look away, Daphne. We all promised each other that we would never speak of him. Not ever. He's like that irritating dog next door who never stops barking. Or in this case, talking. You just want to send him to a farm. Some people like to pretend he doesn't even exist, but others take pleasure in hating and mocking this little pest. I'm not moving. I'm not moving. Scrappy. Number nine, Aku, Samurai Jack. <gasps> Every epic needs a despicable villain, and Samurai Jack finds an unforgettable one in Aku. No! My intention was to destroy you! Oh! <laughs> this shape-shifting master is the epitome of evil. We can tell this not only based on his malevolent actions, but also from his hellish design and haunting voice. Have you learned nothing? Your mortal blade cannot harm me. The polar opposite of the good and noble Jack, Aku is constantly taunting, tricking, and challenging our hero. We all know what's gonna happen. You'll swing your sword, I'll fly away, and probably say something like, I'll be back, Samurai! It's hard not to hate somebody that's just so darn evil, but we still admire how Aku takes such joy in his wicked deeds and pushes Jack to his limits. The rule was no minions allowed! I wasn't the one who went for the sword. Number eight, Meg Griffin, Family Guy. Your only arguable accomplishments are your kids. And look at us. We're a disaster. Hey, watch it. The Griffin family is full of colorful, funny characters, except for Meg. Meg Griffin. Oh, sorry, I'm late, Mr. Here. Taylor. I... When Family Guy first began, Meg was basically just a whiny teenage drama queen that nobody really looked forward to seeing. I don't get it. The harder I try to make friends, the more people hate me. Listen, Meg, you're a one-of-a-kind girl with a mind of her own. Now, see, that's what people hate. Really? The creators seemed to agree that Meg was kind of boring compared to everyone else, so they naturally made her the prime target of the show's physical violence and mental torment. Meg, honey, it's very cold in here. Maybe you'd be more comfortable with your bib on. She means your nipples are sticking out. Mom! Some have argued that the treatment towards Meg has gotten too cruel over the years. However, we admittedly take delight in seeing her endure such punishment. Meg-chan, push to mata saite da yo! Otousama no negai ni shitagaimas! Ore ga onara shita da yo! Number 7. Squidward Tentacles. SpongeBob SquarePants. Knock knock! Who's there? <coughs> I am Bob! <laughs> SpongeBob is a cheerful, optimistic rainbow of imagination. It's only fitting that Squidward would thus be a bitter, pessimistic storm cloud of sad reality. Squidward, you're steaming. You're like a steamed vegetable, only smarter. Where SpongeBob is a hard character not to love, Squidward is a hard character not to love to hate. While he blames SpongeBob and Patrick for a majority of his misery, the truth is Squidward's his own worst enemy. Then bring it around, around, and a little of this, a little of that, a little of this, this, that, 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 that,
Egotistical, paranoid, obsessive, jealous, and pretentious, this wannabe artist always sets himself up for failure. Sometimes we may sympathize with him, but mostly he has it coming. I sorta don't feel like playing my clarinet today. Number 6. Azula, Avatar The Last Airbender Azula is like a high school mean girl if you gave her political and military authority. I had a hunch that you survived, but it doesn't matter. I've known about the invasion for months. The daughter and favorite child of the Fire Lord. This princess is calculating, strategic, and ruthless in her pursuit of the Avatar. The fact that she's hunting our beloved heroes is one thing, but what makes Azula so enjoyably detestable is how bitchy she is in the process. You're trying to keep us here and waste all our time! Um, right, I think your friend just said that, genius. And since you can't see, I should tell you, I'm rolling my eyes. Nothing will stop Azula from rising to absolute power. Once Azula finally achieves what she wants, however, her unbalanced mind doesn't know how to handle it. <laughs> Number 5. Randall J. Weems, Recess Dopey feller jokes. Cancel the funeral, baby. Randall's back in town. While it's easy to dislike a nasty old assistant teacher like Ms. Finster, it's even easier to loathe a fellow student who sides with the enemy. This is big, Randall. Really big. It's gonna make me more famous than Mildred Frisbone. Mildred who? Frisbone, Randall. Frisbone! The teacher who invented detention back in 52. Randall takes great satisfaction in ratting out his classmates. We all knew a little weasel like this in school, and we all wanted to give him a knuckle sandwich. So, how about we let bygones be bygones? I brought something to trade, pickles and sardines. You make me sick. While we wouldn't want to hang out with Randall on the playground, it is fun watching him hatch devious schemes and getting his comeuppance in the end. I'd be so fat! When he wears a yellow raincoat, people run after him yelling taxi! Uh, yeah. Number 4. Helga G. Pataki, Hey Arnold What? What are you looking at, football head? I was just asking you to move your desk. Yeah, yeah, just don't crowd me, okay? At times, Helga is reminiscent of a Shakespearean villain. She's short-tempered, manipulative, and constantly delivers soliloquies. My locket. Farewell, and be done with you cursed symbols of my misspent youth! To be fair, though, we'd have issues too if our mother was an alcoholic, our father couldn't remember our name, and our older sister was an overachiever. Eh, oh, yeah, yeah sure. C come on, play us another one, Olga. I know. How about the Minute Waltz by Monsieur Frédéric Chopin? Oh, I love that one. Yeah, you should hear her play Beethoven, Miriam. Just as the audience has a love-hate relationship with Helga, she has a love-hate relationship with Arnold. Good morning, Arnold. My muse. My inspiration. May this day be the day that you see me with love's eyes. This wise football-headed boy can bring out the best in Helga and even helps her overcome these insecurities. With him in her corner, there just might be hope for Helga. I noticed that you didn't torture me at all today. And I just wondered if you're sick or something. No, I'm okay, Arnold, but thanks for asking. Number three, D.W. Reed, Arthur. I want a barf bag. I want a barf bag, too. Let me go. Anybody who grew up with an annoying younger sibling can identify with Arthur's frustration towards D.W. Yeah, plus, if we keep looking around, we might find some tickets for the merry-go-round. Since you love it so much. This girl thrives on making fun of her older brother and being a nuisance. While D.W. can be pesky, it's difficult to flat out dislike her because she's just being a little sister. Hi, Mrs. Wood. Guess what? Arthur lost your dog. What? Perky? Despite their sibling rivalry, Arthur and D.W. do love each other and come through for each other when it matters most. Many siblings can identify with their relationship, which is full of affection and affectionate hatred. Are those my old glasses? No, I punched the lenses out of my sunglasses. Number two, the Earl of Lemon Grab, Adventure Time. I'm so pleased and gracious to welcome you to our sophisticated society. <laughs> Lemon Grab is one of those characters the audience can never decide whether to love or to hate. His voice is irritating, but never to the point that we want to mute him. I am next in line to the throne, so 
I will be in charge until Princess Bubblegum turns 18 again. That's bunk. He's a social outcast, but we sympathize with his personality disorder regardless. He's controlling and drunk with power, but a ton of great humor is derived from his actions. Play it, Lemon Hope! What? Uh, speak up, child! I didn't say anything. We honestly can't think of a character on Adventure Time who stirs up more mixed emotions. So in the end, we basically just love to hate him. I'm taking Lemon Hope back to the Candy Kingdom and enrolling him in a school for gifted children. No, he needs to stay here. Oh! Before we get to our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Bobby, oh, the kid stuff. Yeah. It's like our wall is a giant refrigerator. I love it. <laughs> Gee, Bob, if I didn't know any better, I think you wouldn't like my paintings. Right, you defeated me. Well, if you ever change your mind, I'll be here for you, ready to make a deal. Hey, want to hear my impression of you in about three seconds? <laughs> Captain Cranium. Where? <laughs> Everywhere! <laughs> when you're done moving that 500 pound engine block to the backyard, make sure you move the other 500 pound engine block out here to the front yard! <laughs> yes, I do not find you threatening, Powerpuff Pooches. Okay, good doggies. I've got lots of work to do controlling the world. Now stay! Well, I've been working for Mr. Wansler for 20 years. I ain't never got invited to the party. Shoot, he don't even let me use the front door. But you wouldn't know about that now, would you, Mr. Tibbs? Oh, yeah. Number one, Angelica Pickles, Rugrats. Oh, my leg! Oh, I think it's broke! <gasps> Angelica is the eldest of all the youngsters on Rugrats, and she will never let the babies forget it. You dumb babies! What's wrong, Angelica? These aren't cookies! They're dog biscuits! Bossy, selfish, and just plain mean at times, this three-year-old is the definition of a spoiled brat. Hey, wait a minute. Those aren't rocks. They're mad! She deserves a severe grounding from her enabling parents, but they constantly let her get away with murder. Yes, Angelica? Auntie, you can take the baby away now. I'm tired of playing with it. Always stealing the show with her troublesome behavior, Angelica does have her moments of empathy, too. Now they'll learn to appreciate me, and they'll never, ever punish me again. Every time it seems like Angelica will learn a lesson, however, she reverts back to the child we love to hate. They call that the fun phrase. No, Mommy! The real fun phrase is, she thinks we're all little Do you agree with our list? I'm excited to. Which animated character do you love to hate? You mean you haven't guessed? You don't see the family resemblance? For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Meg, how could you put us all through that? I'm sorry, you guys. You're a f bitch. Yes. Yes, I am.